Hey everyone, my name is Jade. On behalf of Pastors Ron and Dina, welcome to Faith Life International Church. Before we start service, let's look at the announcements. Join us this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. It will be a night of flipping worship and wrap up Q&A and a meaningful community experience. See you this Tuesday on the table. Our February calendar is up. As you can see, we have amazing events going on this month. Communion, Big Game, and Big Give Sunday. Our lovers and friends make to and of course, life groups. I know, I know, I can't wait either. And by the way, if you want to volunteer at our upcoming events, please see any of our leaders for more information. The Resource Center is offering sweet deals and sweet treats for everyone. Come check out our Valentine's Day basket. We're also offering candy grams and chocolate covered strawberries for Valentine's Day. See you at the Resource Center. Join us for an epic Lovers and Friends Fellowship on Saturday, February 17th at 4 p.m. to land for us. Perfect for singles and couples as it guarantees a fantastic time with great food and fun. That's it for the announcements. Now we'll continue with the worship followed by the word. Hope you enjoy. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Faith Life. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to those that may have joined us online. We're so excited that you joined us this morning. We're excited for this awesome time of worship. Before we go, we have one announcement and then I'm gonna give you the protocol for today. In case you don't already know, if you are interested in being a part of our Faith Life Leadership class, Flame, that meeting is immediately after service. So the interest meeting, not the class, is immediately after service, amen? Amen. All right. So if this is your first time visiting, we're so excited that you are here. We welcome you. We welcome you once. We welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. I've always wanted to say that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If it's your first time joining online, we're so excited that you're here. We've already set the atmosphere in prayer prior to service. We're going to get ready for a time of worship, and then we're immediately going to go into the word, after which we get to sow and we get to give. But first, a brief moment of prayer. God, we thank you for this service. We are so excited that you are in the midst of us. We are so excited that your word says that wherever two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. And we thank you, God, that amazing things happen when you are in the room. We thank you, God, that amazing things happen when you show up. So we thank you, God, that you have shown up in prayer. You're about to show up in worship. You will show up through the word. You will show up in our situation. And we get to honor you. We get to do what? Seal it with a thanksgiving. We get to seal it with a hallelujah. We get to put our hands together. We get to say, thank you, Jesus. We believe it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Amen. Are you ready to worship? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together with us this morning. Hey. We acknowledge you, Jesus. We acknowledge you, Father. And we're grateful for the Holy Spirit leading and guiding this service this morning. Here we go. Come to the praise of his people. When two or three are gathered, he is near. So raise the sound.
identity. Come on, we're going to sing this new song out of a place of revelation. Because I am a child of God. Because I am part of his family. Because he has called my name. He has called me out of the darkness. Now I have the revelation that I can't be who I was. I can't be stuck in what I was doing. But God, I'm here today to proclaim your goodness. To show your goodness. To be the light. To be the salt. To be the city on the hill. So come on, it's time to take our true identity as the church Hallelujah, we Lord cannot God. be timid we cannot be discouraged yes, God. Yes, but God, God we are coming in full force yes, and God. we thank you God that your blood you, has Lord ratified God. your blood has purified we can praise from a place Hallelujah, of knowing Lord come on how many of you know that he's good yes, and he's great God. and greatly to be praised yes God Hallelujah, come on Lord we're going to sing this we're going to give him high praise this morning here we go come now run Stop. Tribes and tongues, let's start singing. No sweeter sound, no sweeter sound. No more than freedom, than freedom found. Make it loud, it make it loud. Let's start singing. We're gonna sing it. Celebrate the King, celebrate the King, seated on the throne. Give him high. 
Thanksgiving started enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise this morning. We declare. Who else is holy and matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise. Who else is holy and matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise.
is mighty and bad, and he fights for us. So I'll be here praising. Oh, let's just not rush this just a moment. I'll be here praising. Come on. Let them know. Let them know why you're here. If you have a need this morning, let them know. If you have a burden on your shoulder, let him know.
Pastor Ron Holmes. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. We glorify you, God. You alone are worthy, God. We glorify Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord Jesus right now with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together in this house. Hallelujah. Jesus, we bless you and we honor you. We give you praise, Master. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to know he is worthy of it all. I'm going to determine in your life he's worthy of it all. Amen. Whether it's your praise or whether it's a sacrifice of praise, I'm going to know he's worthy of it all. Yes, God. Glory Hallelujah, to God. Come on, lift Jesus. those hands and bless him right now. Somebody in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, we honor you. We give you glory. We bless your holy name right now. Hallelujah, Lord glory God. to God. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Thank you for God. your anointing. Thank Hallelujah. You, Thank you, well, how many excited about being in the house of the Lord again today? Hallelujah. That would be good if it was for me, but come on, give it up for Jesus. Somebody, come on, just bless them right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. I am so excited. I love you guys more than you can imagine. Praise God. We're always waiting with bated breath for Sundays and for, and for Tuesdays. Praise God. Can hardly wait to be in front of you. Amen, somebody. We miss you, man. Even though it's just been a couple days. Amen, somebody in here. You ever been that way? Anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? where you just crave the company of some folks that you love. Are y'all here? Amen, somebody. Praise God. Are we ready to move into some new stuff? Are y'all ready to move into this new season? Amen. That's starting to be convincing. Come on, what about the rest of you? 
Give the worship team a real big God bless you. Thank God for them and thank God for Deacon Joy and Anthony being back in our midst. That's a blessing and a half. We appreciate that. We appreciate the love. Amen, somebody in here. And uh, it, it's just been good, guys. I don't know about you. How was your January? Because that's gone now. Isn't that something? I mean, it's like last year, it's like, did we even have 2023? It's like it came. It got a, a to-go plate. It gave us a nod, and it, it was gone. Amen. But how many know this is, is going to be a winning season for you? Amen. Are you ready for to, to win on every hand? You just have to walk through this door that God has given us and uh, understand the door comes open. It is not, in, in essence, an open door. I know that prophecies are going all over the place, but uh, the reality is God has given us key to that door. And this is an important door. It's an effectual door that God's opened for you because on the other side of that uh, is elevation. Now, let me warn you, sometimes the door of promise is, is, is fearful. It's, it has, has this foreboding look. But that's just the enemy trying to stop you from going to your next level of elevation and excellence and promotion. Say amen, somebody in here. So how many know we're a fearless bunch, man? We don't, we, hey, whatever you got to do, we're going to jump through a troop. We will break through the wall of the adversary. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. How many understand what I'm saying? Turn to somebody and say, you know, are you fearless this morning? Are you fearless? I know you're faithful. I know you're full of faith. But are you fearless this morning? All y'all didn't look at each other. Y'all, y'all, y'all. They're dealing with so much fear, you can't look at each other. Turn to somebody and say, are you fearless this morning? Are you fearless? Come on, if you are fearless, we can, if, if you have fear, we can deal with your fear this morning. Say amen, somebody. If you came in with fear, you won't be walking out with that spirit. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to help you out this morning. Oh, are y'all in the house in here? Praise God. I feel like we're going to have a good one this morning. Are y'all good? Are y'all here? Amen. Well, before you're seated, let me just take the time to uh, any birthdays in the month of February. I don't want to overlook you. What? <laughs> what? We got two. Come on. Three. We got three. Praise God. Those hands are popping up. Four. Is that you? Some little person. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> I was like, some little person sitting down behind a chair. Okay, amen. <laughs> Listen, do me a favor, touch them, just love on them, or just give them a high five. Maybe they don't want to be touched right now, but just tell them happy birthday. Everybody shout, you know, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you, man. God's given you another year uh, of, of blessing, of prosperity. The hand of the Lord is going to be with you this year. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. Amen, amen, amen. Lastly, praise God, are there any anniversaries in February? Check that out. Come on, give them, praise God. God bless you guys, man. <laughs> I love it, man. I love solid marriages, and I love that, hey, we're, we're in, a, in yet another year. Amen, somebody. Anybody still married in the house? Oh, okay, look at this. Check that out. Praise God. Anybody tired of being married? Don't you dare raise your hand. Don't you dare raise your hand. Don't you do that. Praise God. Don't do it. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. <laughs> so, they're like, well, Pastor, I can't lie. No, you're going to use faith today. Amen. <laughs> Somebody. One of the best things that can happen to you beyond salvation is you hooking up with the one or linking, I won't use the word hooking up, but you're being in covenant with the one that God's given you. Amen, somebody. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, a uh, couple things. Uh, after service, um, if you are interested in uh, being a part of our flame class, our flame class uh, goes for, I think it's what, about a two and a half year, yeah, almost three year thing. But if you're interested in going deeper into ministry or going deeper into uh, just yeah, even if you're a business person, uh, I think all the principles that you get will really change the game for you. And if that is your heart's desire, uh, this is 
I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm being pulled on to go preach a lot, but I believe this year for me might be the final time that I'm heading it, okay? Uh, there, there will be those that I train that will do it, um, you know, future flame classes. Amen, somebody? But if you want to be a part of that, uh, Miss Tammy Hinton, wherever she, oh, there she is, hiding behind the column over there. Amen. <laughs> she will, at the end of this, give you a little bit of information. Well, it's mainly just, mainly for interest, basically. Those that are interested in being a part, she needs to get information from you, uh, just light information, but she'll make sure that she gets some information to you so that you don't miss that opportunity. Amen, somebody? Is that good? All right, grab your Bibles real quick. Well, let's do our confessions. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. I love it when the anointing is all over the place. Y'all been praying. You must have been praying from the bass guitar. Amen. <laughs> Y'all been praying in here. Y'all know I'm sensitive to atmospheres. Amen, somebody. Hold that, hold that Bible up high. Hallelujah. We're in a different season, guys, and I'm going to talk lightly about that. Here's what I want you to be praying. I have three messages in me right now, okay? Um, part of it, of the Lord spoke to me about this thing of seasons and understanding times and seasons. Okay, so we want to talk into that. We've always kind of went by the verse where we talked about the sons of Issachar and how they understood times and seasons, right? To know what God's chosen people ought to do. But uh, rare is it that we go into it. So there's three phases I want to go, but I, I really got to hear God on it. I can't just teach what I know just because I want to teach it. But uh, today, I'm just, the, the light introduction, we'll be talking about uh, your new season. How many are stepping into your new season? How many understand whether you want to step into it or not, the new season is here? Y'all help me in here. Well, I ain't ready. I'm still trying. You better, you better close that door. Because you're stepping into a new season. Say amen, somebody in here. So we want to talk about that a, a, a bit today. But then uh, next time we meet, and y'all pray because I might have to break this up into two. I'm not sure. But then that will mean the third one since we are in New Beginnings. I don't know how long we're going to go with New Beginnings, but it's just a lot to teach. But the next one will be about what each season means. And then beyond that, I want to talk about cults and what they mean. So we're going to just see how all this works. Amen. Maybe I, can teach it. Maybe I can teach some of it on a Tuesday if I don't get it all out, you know, on Sunday. Is that all right? Praise God. Come on, y'all ready for this? Turn to somebody and say, you are ready for this. You are, you are not in the sandbox and you're not in kindergarten in the spirit. Amen, somebody. Praise God. So we want to dig just a little bit deeper. Is that all right? Praise God. All right. Hold your Bibles up high. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you anticipating like I'm anticipating? Come on. Do you have outstretched neck like I have outstretched? Not that my neck is that long, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm still trying to stretch it out because I'm, I'm expecting. Amen. Oh, that Bible up high. Say, this is my Bible. Come on. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. Say it is the voice of God to me. Come on. Say, I am who it says I am. Say, I can have what it said I can have. Come on, say I can do all that it said I can do. Come on, say this morning, I will be taught the oracles of God. Say my ears are anointed to hear. Say my mind is alert. Say my heart is ready to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living word of God. Come on, say I'll never be the same. Turn to somebody on your left and say, you will never be the same. Come on, say it with me. We'll never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. Now give the Lord a real praise. Come on, give him a crazy praise for real. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on, give the Lord a real praise in here, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on in here, somebody. Yes, 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 yes. All right, when this wheel starts turning, I'm, I'm going to kick out a lot. So I'm going to give you a chance to pray for your neighbor next to you, not really touch him, but just go to him right now and prophesy, say something good, something wonderful is going to happen for you this morning. Uh, hit about five people. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and touch him. Say something good, something wonderful is going to happen for you this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Amen. Yeah, you can clap your hands. Just let me know that you made it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated if you can. The title of this message today, uh, I, I didn't really get really deep with it. <laughs> so uh, the title of this message is Stepping Into Your New Season. Okay, Stepping Into Your New Season. Now, unlike other seasons, I don't want just uh, that season to just creep up on you and all of a sudden you're in your winter season or just to happen and all of a sudden it's summer. Praise God. You didn't have time to change the wardrobe or to do this. Amen. How many know every season calls for a different wardrobe for my people who shop? For some of y'all, it doesn't matter what season. <laughs> I'm going to wear the same flimsy T-shirt I wore last time. But, but, but you understand what I'm saying. Amen. Every season calls for a different wardrobe. Say amen, somebody in here. Glory to God. So we're going to talk into that a little bit. I'm gonna, I want to talk about what it looks like to step into a new season because sometimes, even though we know some things, sometimes we need those things stirred up in us. Say amen, somebody in here. So nothing I'm saying, am I patronizing you in any way? I just want to stir up some things that you know. Is that all right, somebody? Glory to God. Oh, yeah, he's, he's put it up. See, he's ahead of me. Yeah, just take a snapshot as quick as you can. Y'all know we may get to half of those scriptures. Praise God. Amen. But how many remember the days we used to have three rows? Uh, we, we, we had three rows of scripture. Praise God. We trusted that you were a student of the word. Amen, somebody. Now we, we've given you one, one Tower of Babel right there. Just, just one. Amen, somebody. Is that all right? All right, let me start because I will say this. I may not get to my points, and it's okay. I will be giving you points along the way. May not be my points right now because, like I said, I may have to split this up, but I will be giving you other points that I really feel like are Holy Spirit breathed. Is that all right, somebody in here? Glory to God. So we're going to get right into it, but let me give you the points now, and then we'll get right into this. Uh, how do you step into your new season successfully? Let me give you these points, and um, then we'll, we'll, we'll start cooking. Uh, number one, fear not. Number one, fear not. Fear not. Step into this new season without fear. I mean, you know, f fear is one of the biggest killers of your hopes and dreams, so don't let it stop yours. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you're qualified. God's qualified you. He set you up. He calls you to shed the old so you can step into the new. He's done all of that. He set you up to bless you up. Amen, somebody. But the issue is fear. The only thing that blocks you from stepping into the fullness of what called God called you to do in this hour is false evidence appearing real. Amen, somebody. So fear not. No, somebody and say, fear not. Don't you dare. Don't you dare be afraid. Don't you dare. Uh, how many know you can walk into something with your knees knocking and still obey God? Because remember, agape love has nothing to do with where you are emotionally. Amen, somebody in here. Agape love is indeed agape love. So God can say, do it, and I can still be challenged in my flesh, but that's all right. I'm going to obey God and what he's given me. So one more time, turn to your neighbor and say, fear not, fear not. Amen, somebody. Number two, let go of the past. Listen, once and for all, let it go. If you have to break off that rear view mirror in the car, break it off. But let it go. Let go of the past. Yep, they wronged you. They did it. It happened. It is what it is. You know what? And I'd love to tell you that's the only time you're going to be hurt like that. But the reality is there is a strong possibility somebody along this kingdom journey is going to graze you again. But you're going to be better for it because you grew it. You didn't go through it. You, you, you got to a place you decided to grow through it. Say amen, somebody. So let go of your past. Close the door on past issues and hurt. Stop nursing and rehearsing hurts. The more you do that, the more you allow that poison to work. This is why the Bible talks so much about forgiving quickly with your brother. Forgive him. Agree with him. Forgive him while, while you're in the way. Why? Because it, gives, it doesn't give that poison time to work. 
You deal with unforgiveness. If you deal with those challenges, I mean, no, the more you sit in it, that poison just kind of seeps into your system. So I say to you, turn to somebody and do this for me. Say, close the door. Close the door on your past issues. Close the door on hurts, man. It's over. It's okay. Go make somebody's day. Make the devil mad that he reminded you about it. Say, just because of that, I'm going to get five people saved. Come on. Thanks for the reminder, devil. I'm supposed to be winning souls. I appreciate it. Now I'm going to get five people saved. Now he's going to hurt. <laughs> Are you there? Say amen, somebody in here. All right, number three, last one, and then we can get going. Last one, fully embrace your God-given future. Don't give it a half hug. You know, don't, don't partially do it. I've had people ask me, you know, man, I want to do this. I want to walk with you. I want to do this stuff. I said, you can, but you, you can't keep giving us half hugs. You need to fully embrace the future that God has for you. Amen. What we do is we try, to, we try to have hug God's kingdom agenda and then also have hug our agenda. And you have to understand that's, that's going to be a challenge. Am I preaching to you this morning? You need to fully embrace God's agenda for your life. Fully embrace that. How many know he'll deal with the things that, that ails you or that concerns you? He'll deal with that. Amen, somebody in here. Is that good? Praise God. All right, let's get right into this. Glory to God. Appreciate the new glasses, but who, who got, yeah, my head is so much bigger than these glasses. So they, they actually, if they pop, don't laugh. All right, no, I'm, I got to wear them. I got to read. <laughs> but no, thank you, though. <laughs> but if they pop, I dare you to laugh. All right, here we, here we go. Amen, somebody. All right, so this morning, we have too much fun in this church. All right, this, this morning, I want to talk again about stepping into your new season. Now, if you didn't title it, go ahead and title it, Stepping Into Your New Season. Somebody shout, I'm stepping into my new season. Come on, say it again. I'm stepping into my new season. Faith life, I can see it now. Now, I know we got visitors, but I have to strongly say this, even for Christians, even for believers, this is a new season that we stepped into when we crossed over into 2024. Say amen, somebody. How many know we all want to experience something new? We want a new season. Come on. How many want you want to step into, you don't, you love your now, but you're ready for your next. I'll say that again. You love your now, but you're not so in love with it that you are not ready to embrace your next. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. So I'm stepping into this new season in my life because no one wants to wake up tomorrow morning on the same level that they were the night before. Oh, say amen, somebody here. And nobody wants to celebrate, uh, you know, not moving over the past decade, being stagnant or ending up stuck for the last 10 years. Say amen, somebody. Now, I could be wrong, but is anybody here you like that where you want to celebrate being stuck? Okay, I'm just making sure. I might be talking to the wrong group. Nobody wants to celebrate being trapped between two seasons. Are you here? We, wanna, we all want to achieve something new. Turn to somebody and say, how about you? How about you? We all want to uh, achieve something new. But how many know God is saying this morning, son and daughter, in order to step into this place, you're going to have to step into it with uh, boldness. We just talked about that, right? Boldness. You're going to have to be bold about it because you know God is directing you and God is with you. I am not doing something in my flesh, but I'm doing something being led of the Spirit of God. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they indeed are sons and daughters of God. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, but there's another class of people. Uh, how many know there's babes in Christ? You're not better to be led by anybody. You're just hungry. You whine for what you want. How many left their whining season? How I many got out of their whining season and not, yeah, yeah, you left the whining season so you stepped into your winning season. But how many remember when you used to whine? Lord, why is this happening to me? Come on, what did I do? What did I deserve to? Anybody been there? I can't lie. I have been there. And then I thought I got out of the crib and found myself playing with a rattle in the crib. What was going on? You're still whining. And you got to understand that God knows what's best for you. 
Y'all got to help me. Say amen, somebody here. Listen, don't die in your winter season. Spring is on the way. Let me say that again. Don't you dare die in your winter season. It's not over for you. How many know God is the God that will bring spring right behind that winter season? Turn to somebody and say, your new season is now. Come on, tell them your new season is now. Oh, do you get that? God's created a whole new season for you to be victorious in the days ahead. Oh, shout hallelujah in here. Come on, it's very important, and, and that's why we're taking time to teach that, this, that you take the necessary steps to walk in victory and enter into this new season blessed. Amen, somebody. Don't be left behind. Amen. Somebody shout, I will not be left behind. Say it again. Say, I will, I will not. Not this year. Yeah, yeah, not this year. I will not be left behind. All right, come, come on with me. Ecclesiastes, let's go three. We're going to go Ecclesiastes one through eight. Is this all right so far? Glory to God. I'm going to give you some stuff that I think will help. Ecclesiastes three, one through eight. Amen. Ecclesiastes three. Sorry, guys. When I eat it, it kind of goes up here. I know for some people, I think other people, it goes down here. Mine goes up. Amen. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Are you ready? Now, this is the New King James Version. All right? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1. New King James Version. 3, 2, 1. Ready, read. To everything, there is a season. Underline that in your Bible if you have a, a, you know, a you know, paper Bible. Otherwise, do what you do. To everything, there is a season. Now, my, my question all day this morning is, what season are you in this morning? What season are you in this morning? Amen. To everything, there is a season. Come on, keep reading. A time for every purpose under heaven. How many know your seasons in your life comes loaded with purpose? Anytime God's causing a season to show up, your seasons in life comes loaded with purpose. Come on, keep reading. Let's read quickly. Verse 2, the time to be born. Come on, and a time to die. Come on, a time to plant, and after you plant it and get your harvest, what? A time to pluck up what is planted. Number three, a time to kill. I think I heard the movie about that. Keep going. A time to, to heal. A time to to break down, and even a time to, to build up. Verse 4, a time to weep. And let me help you guys when it's time to weep. I don't care whether you're male or female. Get it out. If you don't, it will manifest itself other ways. Amen. How many know as humans, we weren't created to really carry certain burdens, so it's important. Now, for men, sometimes we have to relearn to cry. Because all your life you were told, you know, you ain't a man, brother, if you, got, if you got to cry about it. And, you know, what happens is you hold in a lot of things. And let me tell you, that's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. Amen, somebody. I'm compassionate. I've got to a place where I can cry, thank God. But he said the time to weep, and he said the time to, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to, Time to dance, glory to God. Verse 5, a time to cast away stones, come on, and a time to do what? Time to even gather stones, a time to embrace, and then there's a time to refrain from embracing, glory to God. What would faith life do if we can't hug? Amen, somebody. Verse 6, come on, a time to gain and a time to, time to actually lose, a time to keep. And then there's sometimes the Lord says, throw that away. You don't need that no more. Amen. That's important. Why? Because sometimes Ishmael show up and God says, you're going to have to 86 Ishmael before you can take on this Isaac. And hint somebody. Verse 7, come on. A time to tear and a time to, to sow. A time to, to keep silent. And then a time... You need to know what season you're in. Uh, one, one key lesson God taught me in life was sometimes you're going to need to be the lion, you know, and then sometimes you got to know when to be the lamb. Come on. Sometimes there's a time you need to refrain. Even though you know what's happening right now, sometimes the Lord says, time to be silent right now. God says, I'll open a door where you can speak. But right now, you need to be the lamb more than you need to be the lion. How many know you got both inside you? 
Oh, they don't believe it. Touch somebody and say, there's a lion inside you. Do you believe that? Glory to God. Some of y'all looking at me like, what? No, no. They're the, they're, they're, they're the lion inside you. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. <laughs> Verse 8, I'll keep going. A time to love. Really? For a believer? Really? A time to hate. A time of war and a time of of peace. So uh, let, let, let's tap into this. Did you get that? Give the Lord a hand clap for the reading of his word. So what does it entail? Come on, I want you to make your list. What does it entail? I'll give you a few things. What does it entail? What, is, what does stepping into my, my new season look like? We want to talk into that a little bit. What does stepping into my new season look like? Number one, number one, somebody shout number one. Number one, it's moving into an unknown territory with God. It's moving, you are moving in 2024 in a place that is a different space. It is not familiar. I got to say that again. It is not where you're headed now is not a familiar place, but you are familiar with your God. Y'all got to help me in here. Say amen, somebody in here, that it doesn't matter where exactly God's taken me. I know that he knows the thoughts and plans that he thinks toward me. Thoughts of peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, to bring me to an expected end. I'm going to know my end is great. Somebody better get excited in here. I don't know about you. I don't know what we got to walk through, but I know ultimately my end is great. And I know even while I'm walking through, though the waters try to overflow the banks, how many understand I have been insulated right now? Oh, come on, somebody in here. Because I walk in the center of the will of God. If that's you, shout hallelujah in here. It is moving into unknown territory with God. Now, let me help you. That's just like saying, speaking unknown tongues. How many understand is unknown to you, not unknown to him? Y'all got to help me in here. Say amen, somebody. They have you speaking in an unknown tongue. I think some of you know the story where I was, uh, I was at a, I was hosting a Spanish event, and the pastors came in, and I began to pray. I did sense a shift in my tongues, but I, I didn't think anything of it. And I noticed that while we were praying, everybody was really, really excited. They were going crazy. I said, boy, these people really like my prayers, boy. But I didn't understand I was speaking their language. And he t they told me, do you even know what you said when you, when you were praying? I said, I was praying in the Holy Ghost. They said, no, you were praying our language. And they said, God said this, 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 and this. And I said, oh, my God, really? Come in, how many know that works? Come on. When you speak in the vertical language of angels, basically. Come on. How many know God, God will have you? There's the vertical language, and then there's the horizontal language to men. Oh, glory to God. Shout hallelujah in here. I mean, I know you're going to see that in greater measure in this house. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But it is moving into an unknown territory with God. How many understand that can be real exciting? You're not moving into this place on your own. Say amen, somebody. It can be pretty exciting, but the big deal is because he's all, he knows where you're headed. How many understand you can trust him? I may not know where I'm going. I, this may be a place I've never been before. But how many understand he knows all about this place? Because how many know God finishes everything before he starts? Proverbs chapter 3. I just want you to give, give you this. I know you know it, but put your eyes on it. This is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 3, 3 5 through 6. New King James Version. It says, trust in the Lord with all your and he said, don't you, especially in 2024, he said, don't you lean. He said, lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes the enemy of the new move is the old move. So what we try to do is we try to do the same religious acrobatics, the things we did in the past, we try to bring it into the now season. And God said, they ain't going to work over here. Say amen, somebody. Just hear my voice, and it's going to work for you every time. Yeah, he says, lean not to your own understanding. Verse 6, in all your ways, what does he say? Acknowledge me. And what he says, he says, I will. 
I, I will direct your path. I'll tell you what the next step is. He said, this place, write this down, is not a familiar territory. You're moving into unknown territory in 2024. You're moving into unknown territory with God. But the beauty, and, and you got to get this, you don't know it, and that's okay. You don't know about it. That's all right. I have the Spirit of God on the inside, and he knows everything that I need to know. Glory to God. Anything I don't know, I can just talk up. I can talk it up, and how many understand? God interpret that one for me. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. He says, you don't know it, but the beauty is that you're moving there with me. You're moving there with God. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. You're moving there with God. It doesn't matter. You're moving with God, and wherever God is, how many know, even if the place is dry, God will bring moisture. I'm not moving in this on my own. I'm moving with him. Well, what if you lost friend, friends in the last season? That's all right. How many know in this new season you're going to gain the ones God wants you to have? Shout hallelujah in here. Come on, let me give you another one. It is also, when we talk about what is moving into my new season look like, number two, it is entering into an unfamiliar space. It's God's space. It's entering into, some people think just because they've been in church for the last 10 years, 15, 20 years, they know every facet of who God is. You will never be able to exhaust who our God is in every facet. Oh, am I talking to you today? Yeah, entering into an unfamiliar space. Everybody say space, the final frontier. Amen. But it, moving into an unfamiliar space or God's space, the beauty of it again is that when you do this, you're moving into that space with God. It's a new space. Somebody shout, it's a new space. So what's God saying, Pastor? He's saying, fear not, fear not, fear not. Fear not as you step into this unfamiliar territory or this unfamiliar space. I mean, you know, most of the time, and you got to get this, when you move into a new space, anybody ever moved into a new space or moved into a new relationship or moved into the new office with the new managers that don't know nothing about who you were before? I mean, no, that could be a little spooky. Like, man, I got to reprove myself. You're like 30 years old, I got to reprove my 40 years old, I got to reprove my 50 years old, I got to reprove myself. <laughs> I mean, I know you can do all things and let him do it through you. I mean, I know in this body you might get weary, but let him do it through you. Oh, shout amen, somebody in here. Most of the time when you move into a new space, I mean, I know that God's created, you sometimes will find yourself getting very, write this word down, uncomfortable uncomfortable. I don't like this, but how many understand the mother hen, it, it, the mother eagle is making it uncomfortable for you? Remember, as you walk in this new this space, it's not just about you. That's a big problem, is learning how to die so he can live through you. When you walk into this new space, it's not just about you, but God is strategically using you to expand his kingdom agenda in the earth. Say hallelujah, somebody. Yes, it's a new space, but he says for you, fear not. Come on, say fear not. Say I refuse to fear. Somebody shout, I live the fearless life. God says I'm going to move into this space with you, so there's no reason to fear. Say amen, somebody. It could be a new space of business. Say amen. Any, any business people in the house? It can be a new space of business. Say amen, somebody. It can be a new space of ministry. It can be new opportunities that God has opened up for you, whether you are working or are, are gainfully employed or not. It's a new space that God's excited about presenting to you this time. Don't get nervous about everything you're about to hear and the things that are going to come out on the news. How many know God set this up? He set this year up so that you can prosper even in the midst of the pressure. I don't have enough people there. Come on. How many understand that no matter what is bought, I know that this is a war season, but whatever is bought, God has set me up to prosper even in the midst of the pressure. Somebody better get excited about that. Work on your war cry because God's with you. Oh, shout amen, somebody. 
God is with you. Come on. Come on. The Bible says where two or three are gathered. Did you know men and women that come together anointed by the Holy Ghost who have a covenant of peace? We can come together and release words that are more powerful than any nuclear weapon that can be sent. Now they're thinking about their clap. <laughs> I'm just reminding you who you are in Christ. Say amen, somebody in here. So you've never been in this space. Say amen, somebody. You have never done this thing before. They Come on, how many have been there where they promoted you, but you know and I know that you weren't qualified for where you are? Say amen. It's just that favor, God's unmerited favor, God's uncommon favor, to, it showed up and it made a way for you that nobody else could have made a way for you. Say amen, somebody. I, I got to tell you again, it's not just about you. Turn to somebody and say, it ain't about you. It's not just about you. As long as you move with him in this space that he's opened up to you. God has promised you that no matter what comes, you are my responsibility. I will see you through this. Isn't it amazing how we make provisions for us as if God ain't present? God said, I thank you for God. You are my responsibility. And he says, what would that look like if I allow the waters to overflow you? He says, you belong to me. Come on, you're mine. He says, your very life is a billboard of my goodness to the earth. Shout amen, somebody in here. Turn to somebody and say, God's got your back, man. God's got your back. Don't you get nervous in this season. I know it's new, and I know there's going to be a lot of things that are coming. But you know what? In the midst of it, God has his hand on your life. Oh, is that good, somebody? And God, and I'm just prophesying, he's going to see you through every facet, every hurdle. Come on, somebody. Every issue that comes, the Lord is going to see you through it. Am I talking to you today? You got your mind on your kids. What about my children? Hey, again, if they, anything that's a part of who you are, I'm going to know God's got you covered. You just continue to declare his word. You just continue to prophesy over those children. And how many understand they come under the auspices or they come under the canopy of the grace of God that's on your life right now? Somebody shout hallelujah at here. You alone could not do that on your own. It was, it'd be enough that he gave you the Holy Ghost, but he didn't stop giving you the Holy Ghost. How many know he gave you angels? He gave you unseen agents. Say amen, somebody. And on top of that, he gave you anointed friends. Not that you need a whole lot. Somebody turn to somebody and say, I'll be your two. He says, well, two on earth. I'll be your two. I'll be your two. He says, well, two on earth shall agree. Two people. Touching anything that they'll ask in my name. I don't know about you, but I can ask a lot of things. Two on earth shall agree is touching anything that they shall ask in my name. He says, I'm going to do it for you. Oh, my goodness. Shout hallelujah in here. Come on. Come on, somebody. Shout amen. Romans chapter 8. I'm, I'm trying to keep moving. Glory to God. I got so many spots I want to get excited. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Is this good, somebody? Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1. Ready, read. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. This is New King James. 3, 2, 1. Ready, read. And we know that no matter what happens, he says, all things do what? They work together for good to those, that's me. Somebody shout, that's me, that's me, that's me. <laughs> for those who love God, not just Christians, but he said those Christians who love God. When I love God, I'm going to do what pleases God. Faithfully coming to church pleases God. Choosing, choosing right friendships and right relationships, that pleases God. Reading his word and spending time and fellowshipping with him, that pleases God. Blessing somebody when you know he gave you more than what you need right now. See, that's where I want to get in this church. I want to get to a place where we don't even have needs. We're so busy blessing each other. We'll listen to the, you ever notice like things shut off when God tells you to bless something with something that you work hard to, to earn? God say, take the 200 in your pocket right now. Trust what I'm saying. Bless them. You say, get behind me, Satan. 
<laughs> Are y'all here? You got, come on, if you're going to be a blesser. See, see, here's the part that makes me laugh. We say forever, I want to be like God. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like God. God gave the best that he had. He didn't just sit there saying, I love you, but he pulled out the best he could possibly give you. So how, do, how come we choke for a measly couple hundred? Yeah, you say, God said I'm a financier of the kingdom. But you can't even buy them lunch for the week? I love you. I'm not getting on you. Are y'all here? I, I, I love you. I'm just helping you. I want faith life to get to a place where we're constantly, we'll hear the Lord say, hey, trust me, bless them, do this. Somebody else comes in. I don't know why, but I had you on my mind. I had this. Did you know after a while, we almost don't have to pray about needs? We can, we can go to a higher level of elevation and begin to pray about wants. Are y'all in the house in here? The only reason you still pray about needs is because your flesh keeps getting in the way. But we got to get to a place where we elevate. Somebody say elevate. <laughs> I got a joke, but I ain't doing that one. Amen, somebody. I was about to because it, it would have been real funny, but y'all would have saw me very differently. A a amen, somebody. So he says, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8, 28, he says, and we know that all things, everybody shout all things. All things work together for good to those who love God and those who are were called according to his, his purpose. I told you, every season in your life is packed full of purpose. We are in a specific season of the church, but if you look around this room, you're looking at different seasons. People are in different seasons in their life. People are in different uh, relationship seasons, job seasons, uh, business seasons. They're just, they're in all these seasons in their physical life. They're, they're, they're in all these different seasons. And again, we want to talk that up um, the next time, but I got so much else to talk about. Amen. This might be a word for somebody, and I think it's important. Uh, how many know God's taking you to a brand new space? Put somebody and say, it's a new space. And God wants you to step into your new season with confidence. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God. Number three, let me give you this. Number three, now notice I haven't even got to my points, and like I said, I don't know that I will, but I'm just giving you some things I got in the middle of the night. Amen. Uh, number three, it, it, what else does stepping into my new season look like, Pastor? It is getting out of the old way, and let me add to that, and your own way of doing things into his new way of doing things. Is getting out of the old way of doing things and stepping over into his new way. Everybody say his new way, his new way. How many know God has a new way for you? So out of all God is saying, if you're going to step out into this new season successfully, he says, I want you, son, I want you, daughter, to get rid of the old mentality. That worked in the old days. That worked in the old church. That worked in the old place of business that you're a part of. But he said this year, he says, get, get out of that old mentality, renew your mind, and then embrace the bigger and better season that I have a provision for you. Oh, shout amen, somebody in here. How many understand, uh, according to what's in your mind and it migrates to your heart, it, it, it has a capacity limit. And it is important that you allow your mind to be renewed because we're asking God for things to pour into a limited space in our thinking. God says, I want to give you all that. I want to give you more. But you're so limited. And you refuse to hear people on this level. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't, agree. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And how many know that's holding you up from the new place that God's called you to be? What better person to be an entrepreneur? What better person to have a million or millions than you who've walked through the process? See, God got you past that where there was a time money would have had you instead of you just having money. 
But how many know you got a PhD in being a bass now? <laughs> so now that I got my PhD, I'm ready. Lord, load it up because wherever you direct that I need to sow seed, wherever you direct that I need to give uh, first fruits or any fruits, how many understand I'm going to do exactly what you gave me to do? Why? Because I know what it is to be a bass. I know what it is to suffer loss. I got a PhD in being without. It's okay. Now that you're prospering me, my heart's desire is not about me no more. It's about prospering others. Oh, shout amen, somebody in here. I told you we all want Abraham's blessing, but not everybody on the planet want Abraham's ministry. Abraham's ministry was he was blessed to be a blessing. And if you're, you're getting five cars and you're getting three houses and you're, if it's all about everything going to you, how many know you ultimately will spiritually implode? It's not about everything coming to you. You are a funnel of blessing. I'm trying to help you guys. Somebody say amen in here. So you got to understand how God's setting you up this year so that when the, 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 the trucks arrive, you're ready to bless other people. You say, all right, Lord, I, I know all this ain't for me. Uh, who, who you want me to bless? Say amen. I thank you that you've trusted me or you've entrusted me with this sphere of influence or this level of authority. Say amen, somebody in here. And God will always try you on the level you're on. But there, there's a few of you that, that I'm telling you, God has million, multi-million dollar ideas, but God is trying you on the level you're on right now. Am I talking to you right now? Amen. I can go into that, but I, I'll keep going because it's too much. Say amen, somebody. Tell somebody and say, you got to embrace the bigger and better. You got to embrace the big and better. God, God has greater provision for you in 2024. I know there's doom and gloom talking. Yeah, you might see a little gloom for the earth and what's going to happen in the world, but that's why we are still here. We are lights to the world. And I'm going to know in order for me to be a light, I got to be lit up. I got to be prospering. Come on, I got to be able to solve problems. I can't be a guy that's stuck in the pit with you. No, no, I got to be able to solve problems, which means God will give me insight. Come on, to lead people, to lead families. Come on, to lead people that he's connected me with. That's why I am a light of the world. I will expand Jesus' kingdom even in the midst of darkness. I'm going to know light will shine brighter even as it gets dark. So don't be moved by what you hear. Amen, somebody. You need to be moved by what you believe. Matthew chapter 9. Is this all right? Matthew chapter 9 and verse 17. That wasn't enough for y'all. Is this good? Is this all right? Okay, Matthew chapter 9. I'll stop when you tell me. No, I can't lie in church. No, I won't. Yeah, I, I ain't going to stop. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Matthew chapter 9 and verse 17. Now, this is the New King James verse, Version. Let's read it. Come on. This is talking about your old way of thinking right here. Matthew 9 verse 17. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1. Ready? Read. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskin. Why, Lord? How come? As the wineskin will break. The wine, all that precious wine, all that stuff will be spilled out and the wineskins... So nobody gets any benefit. The wine is all over the place. The wine skins are broken, uh, are, are bursted, so you can't use those again. But they put what? New wine into what? Now, how many know at the top of this year, God's got all kind of new wine for you? What do you mean, Pastor? God's got revelation that will take you not only through 2024 successfully, but on into 2025 and 2026. Say amen. But they put new wine into a new mindset, a new mentality. Church, if you got your eyes open, God's shifting the way church is being done. It's not just, where I know many people are calling for revival, and revival ultimately, let me help you, should be a lifestyle. What we need is revival. Well, we do, but that should be a lifestyle. What God is doing is he's reforming. It's called a reformation. He is doing, he is shifting the way we do church. How many paying attention to those things? Yeah, he's shifting how church is done. He's opened up new avenues. Why? He says, I'm going to get my word to you, but there's a way we're going to do this. So you got to be open to him. How many know when the cloud's moving, don't, don't be cocky, don't be, pride, don't be full of pride. Move with the cloud. 
Put somebody and say, you got to move in this season. Oh, you didn't do it. You got to do it again. Say, you got to move it. I'm talking to you. You got to move in this season. You got to move. You can't just be stagnant. Come on. That's the difference between rivers and, and lakes. Lakes are stagnant. Things get dumped in the lakes. Everything that's going on, all, every, all the shit that's pouring to the lake, and eventually there's a stench to the lake. But rivers flow. So even if something tried to hold on to that river, how many know that river is continuing to come on somebody in here? The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. How many got rivers on the inside of you this morning? But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both, he says, are preserved. See, our problem is we, we want to pour what? New wine into an old mindset. And that's never going to work. God says, I don't like operating like that. Because I'm giving you precious stuff. I'm giving you precious revelation. I'm giving you pearls of great price. And I don't need you to take lightly what I'm doing. It is not business. Oh, come on. And it is not business as usual in 2024. It is not business as usual in 2024. This is a different season. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to shift with what God's doing. Say amen, somebody in here. I want you out of your comfort zone. I want you to get out, God says, that old way of thinking and doing things. And I want, you to I want you to embrace the new way that I do it now. Example of that. How many know that there are marriages that don't work a lot of times, especially, and I'm not cursing nothing. I'm giving you an example. You're going to do good. Amen. But he, that there are marriages. You always have to say what you're not saying so you can say what you are. There are some marriages that don't work a lot of times. Why? Especially second marriages. And it's because some people enter into the second marriage with the same mentality they had in the old marriage. How y'all here? I know yours is successful because you're anointed. Don't miss what I'm saying. Is that all right? Let me ask this. What's the definition of insanity? Instead of enjoying what God has now blessed you with, you are comparing uh, what you have now to what you had in the past season. Come on, somebody in here. Listen, that movie is over. The credits are running, but you're still sitting in the theater watching the screen. It's, it, it's over. It's over. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, God gave me that one. I didn't know what that meant or nothing. I just said it because he said it. A -a Amen, somebody in here. That the movie is over. He said the movie is over. I know that there's some movies we wait for the extra scene. But how many know life ain't about the extra scene? I'm going to hang in here this last little scene. No, there is no extra scene coming. My son and I, we say, is there an extra scene? So we have to be sitting there. We have to go, you know, okay, extra scene, Marvel. Okay, you know, we try to, try to find, like, should we be sitting here right now or should we be headed out? And then if there's a scene after the extra scene. They got y'all coming and going, man. <laughs> Tap somebody and say, that movie's over, man. That movie's over. Credits are running, man. Get out. Get out. Move out of that season. Get into the next season. Don't just sit there sit, just staring at the screen. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. Most of the time, the reason, the reason people can't step into their new season and have a new beginning, it, 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 even in ministry, I'll say that even at Flick, I have seen it countless times where people have came through that door. I love them. Please don't miss what I'm saying. I don't judge people that come through the door. But sometimes the Lord will speak to my heart and say, this is why I bought them here, and he will give me the intel. But because they step into the, the new season, still walking in the old. Y'all got to help me in here. It's a whole new group of people. It's a whole new group of everything. You're walking down a brand new aisle. You got a, a, a truckload of opportunity. But all you can see is who you were. Not who you are in this season. 
I am so glad I came to church today. I'm so glad I came to church today. Are y'all here? They come to Faith Life, Elder Tucker. They come, and they're still comparing their present season with, with what they used to have, with their past season. Do you know it doesn't matter who you are? It doesn't. Listen, if you really gained and, 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 and your backpack, you got the principles of God, I found out those principles will work at any church. I learned how to serve at the old place. I'm going to come in here and serve at this one. How many understand? Are y'all here? I learned how to, oh, come on, somebody. I learned how to humble myself at the old. Now, here's the challenge. Old place, you got humbled. <laughs> but, but new place. The new place, you don't have to wait to be humbled. I mean, you understand, I can choose to humble myself in the new place and let God by his spirit, come on, I don't have to tell the man of God my credentials. It will be uncovered in my servanthood. They're going to discover who you are in the midst of your serving, in the midst of your being nice, in the midst of your being kind to people, in the midst of your always speaking an encouraging word. They're going to discover who they got in their midst. This ain't just anybody. I mean, they understand this is a kingdom enforcer. Shout amen, somebody in here. But they look at who they were in their past season, and it's getting in the way of who they are now in their current season. God doesn't want you in 2024 stuck between seasons because it's not going to benefit anybody, not even you. It feels safe, but it's just not safe. I'm preaching this morning, man. Somebody better give me a high five or something. So a seed, do something. Y'all, y'all do something. Say, man, somebody, are y'all here? You should never compare who you were last year to who God's made you now. Say amen, somebody. What we need, Deacon Zenobi, and, I, I, and Curtis, I was thinking about this. We need a shedding class. Shed stuff. Let's help you. Whole reason for this class, get that junk off you. Well, you know, I was the apostle, so don't be bringing that here, man. Get out of here with that. Oh, no, I, I got to wake up. I'm not at home. <laughs> I've asked it before, people. Amen. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, that work for you there is not needed here. And if you really are who you're saying, how many understand, it'll, it'll, your gift, the Bible says, your gift, with or without a title. To be honest with you, titles are just a function. I don't know why we hide behind titles. It's a function. I have an unction to function. The reason I'm pastoring you is I, that's a function of mine. And let me help you, it's not really my function, it's his. Well, I'm apostle so-and-so. Well, last time I checked, apostle and prophets were the foundation. When you go to parade of homes, you don't have your, your take pictures of where you've been and say, my God, look at this foundation. Oh, my God. No, the, fa <laughs> the foundations are what hold everything else up. They're not trying to be saved. Lord Jesus, help us. All right, glory to God. It'll make room for you. If you're a prophet, just prophesy. We'll know. Amen, somebody. If you're a painter, paint. If you ain't, just ain't. Philippians. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to go 12 through 14. How much time do I have? I'm, I told them I'm going to get you out of here on time. Okay, Philippians chapter 3. Is this good stuff? Amen, somebody. Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 14. I love you guys. I love you with all my heart. Philippians chapter 3. Well, I didn't come to church to get yelled at, I tell you that. Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to go 12 through 14. Is this helping you? Philippians chapter 3, we're going to go 12 through 14. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1, ready, read. Now that I, again, New King James Version, okay? Now that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? 
He says, even though I got there, I'm still pressing into this next season. That I may do what? Lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus hath already laid hold on me for. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself. Now, how many know if anybody could brag, it's him. But, but he, 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 how many know he chose to humble himself? Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. What? Forgetting. Forget it. Somebody touch somebody and say, forget it. Forget it. If that's the thing that's holding you up from stepping into your new season, let it go. That worked in that season. This is the new one. Forgetting those things which are behind and doing what? Reaching forth to those things which are ahead, he said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, am I helping you? Somebody give the Lord a hand clap in here. Where there's upward call, where there's high call, there's got to be low call. And where there's low call, there's got to be no call. But let me tell you, God had the calling on every one of you. Amen, somebody in here. But you got to be willing to embrace it. And let me tell you, God may not place everything in your hand, but he will always place it within your reach. I've been waiting on God to send it. No, you ain't looking at it right. There's something God put in your reach. And you're going to have to use your faith, and you're going to stretch out, and you're going to receive it. God ain't going to just give you nothing either. I mean, he gave you salvation. He gave you the Lord Jesus. He gave you the nine gifts of the Spirit and nine fruits. Gave you a myriad of angels that are watching and access to more to watch over you. Gave you covenant relationship. What is your problem? You got issues. He's given you everything possible to live a successful and prosperous life. But you just got to understand, I don't need to wait on everybody's opinion either. <laughs> Amen. My God, it seems like everywhere I'm stepping, there's my landmines, Dr. Proctor. Help me. There's God now I'm playing. Number four. Number four. Another thing I got that's, that's important is moving from the place of your choice and stepping into the place of his voice. There's so many areas in the Bible where the, that patriarch would have never chose that. But what he wanted was he wanted to find the space where he could hear God clearly. And so it didn't matter what he had to let go of. He said, man, I hear God clearly here. For some of you that know my testimony, the Lord Jesus came to me, and he talked to me about uh, the church that I was in, and I needed the Lord to say to me personally, I, I, I put a fleece out there. I shouldn't have done it, but thank God he, he, he backed me up. I put a fleece out there, and I said, if you really are saying leave here, because, I mean, they were setting me up at that church, and I said, I, I need you to say it personally. Now, I thought he was going to say it, not show up. <laughs> I, was, I was looking to hear it. But the Lord showed up personally and got in front of me. And I was like, Lord Jesus, I, I think I'm supposed to die now. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be living around this. I mean, come on, he's standing in front of you now. But he told me about what he would have me do, but he didn't make clear where the place was. He said, I'll show you that place. Start going. You think about it, it happened to Abraham twice. It happened to Abraham when he told, said, go sacrifice your son. To, well, first he said, leave, your, leave your, your country, your kindred, all of them, and he partially obeyed that because he had a favorite nephew. And that favorite nephew almost cost him the call of God. You got to listen to God when God says, shed them, let that go. You're not to be a part of that. Wait a minute, I don't see nothing wrong with this, man. I, I can handle myself. I, I can handle myself. No, no, no. We're not saying what you think you can handle. God says this may not be a sin, but it will be a weight to you. I mean, if you're trying to swim across the ocean and you got weights chained to your, <laughs> your, your feet, it's going to be real tough trying to get where you're going. Amen, somebody. So that one time, so he, he, he partially obeyed that, and God obviously understood him. But then after that, it was later, he said, I want you to sacrifice your son. He says, go to one of the mountains I'll tell you about when you get there. Say amen, somebody. 
So he had to do that again. I, it's not choosing. It's not your choice because whatever your choice is, you're going to have to work that out in your flesh. Well, it's my choice. Many of you, you are here not really at your own choosing. Some of you, God told you to be here. You would have chosen a 3,000-member sanctuary and sat in the back where nobody can tell if you're coming or going. Praise God. <laughs> you would not, I mean, they wouldn't know. You could have missed the last four services. But God didn't trust you with that, so he put people that will be all up in your business and call you. Where you been? You all right? Everything okay? Oh, my God, stop. No, but the deal is... He was saying, where are you? We love you. What's happening? My God, don't nobody check on you till you're, till you're out and you ain't, ain't at church. Exactly. <laughs> are you here? We love you that much. You, you'd have a complaint if we didn't, we, we didn't say nothing. My God, I've been out the last three months. Ain't nobody picked up a phone to check on me. But I thought the last complaint was we, oh, okay, amen, amen, amen. Just, 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 just learn this one. You know, it's not the place of your choice. Some of you are here because you got to be here. I don't, I don't plan to make it rough for you. I do plan to challenge you, but I don't plan to make it rough for you. You, you got to be here because God directed you here. You chose the place of his voice, not the place of your choice. Y'all help me in here. The place of your choice is so much easier. The place of your choice is not going to challenge your, your flesh at all. The place of your choice is staying in the boat, not walking out on the water to go where Jesus is. It's the place of your turn to somebody and say, that man is preaching this morning. Listen, as a believer, there are two positions. There are two positions in life. There are two positions. Write this down. There's a position of your choice. We just talked about it. That's, that's the fleshy choice. Uh, that's a carnal choice. That's, you know, is what he, Abraham did with Lot. He said, man, I, there shouldn't be a fight between my, my workers and yours. Man, my God, we can't have this. You, you choose a spot. And what did he do? What did, what did Lot do? He looked. He said, check out that green grass over there. My God, guess what we can do with that? But how many know grass on the other side is greater for a reason? Hint, hint, somebody. <laughs> and a whole lot of fertilizer. I got to say fertilizer for sake of the camera. Are y'all here? <laughs> there is a position of your choice where you presently, uh, where, where you are presently, and then there's a position of his voice where you hear his voice clearly, affluently. Question is, where do you want to be this morning? Where do you want to be? Turn to somebody and say, is he talking to you? Where do you want to be this morning? Do you want to be in the place of your choice? Or do you want to be in the place of hearing his voice? That is everything. Say amen, somebody. See, if you remain in the place of your, your, your carnal uh, choice, how many know there's confusion, there's frustration, there's a high level of stress, and you have to work things out in the flesh? You can't continue all your Christian walk to make your own choices and then later, two or three weeks, three months later, ask God to bless it. That's not how that works. God doesn't have to pay for anything he didn't order. Well, it says we have uh, pepperoni, we got uh, anchovies, we got that. Oh, my God, I don't eat that. <laughs> Are y'all here? God never has to pay for what he didn't order. Ain't that somebody here? But if you move into the place where God wants you to be, somebody shout, place of his voice, place of his voice. Come on, you may not fully understand what's going on, but how many know he's working it out for your good? You're intentional, man. He's working it out for your good. Say amen, somebody in here. Uh, you may not completely understand what's happening, but God will bless you in that place. Say amen, somebody. He will give you divine counsel and counselors in that place. God will give you provision as you continue to walk in the perfect will of God for your life. Shout amen. How many know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, shout hallelujah. 
Genesis chapter 13. I'm down to about 10 minutes. Genesis chapter 13, 8 through 15. I'm going to read it fast so I can get to what I'm saying. Genesis 13, 8 through 15. So Abram, Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me, between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kin, we are brethren. Is not the whole land before us, man? Please separate from me. If you, if you take the left, he said, then I'll go to right. If you go to the right, I'll go left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered. Praise God. They already got an irrigation system out there. <laughs> Everywhere uh, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zoar. It, it, verse 11, then Lot chose for himself what looked good to his flesh, all the plain of Jordan. See, this is why pastor gets involved. I have spiritual daughters, and sometimes they say, hey, before I really get serious with this guy, I, wanna, uh, I just want to run it by you. What do you get? And sometimes I have to look at them and say, you really want to know? No, pastor, I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to spend time a little bit. Then I'll come back to you. But the reality is you can't just go with what looks good to your flesh if you want the will of God. How many have been around that mountain long enough where I just want the perfect will of God now for my life? Amen. No, not talking about anybody here. I'm just giving you how that works. Amen, somebody. Is that good? So uh, then Lot chose for himself the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Now, hit, hit somebody in the room. If I find a man or a woman of God that's highly anointed by the Lord, and I got knuckleheads trying to convince me not to be there, listen, I am not leaving your side. So you can say all day, you know what, we probably don't need to hang. If I was Lot, I'd say, I'm sorry, Unc, I'm going to be hanging with you. You want me to get rid of these clowns? I love them, but we'll get rid of them because you're the one that, that, that's anointed. You're the one that has the blessing of God on your life. I don't want to separate from where the blessing is. It's time this, in this hour that we return to understanding the power of the blessing. Are y'all here? Not every church has the blessing of God on, on, on it. Not every church is really set up by God to even be in existence. Are y'all here? Amen, somebody. That's important because to shift churches out of season puts you into their season. And their season doesn't always work for the season that God's called you to be in in this hour. Am I talking too much? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Well, I'm a grown man. I ain't going. No, no, no. I, you got to think about that. What's pushing you out of here? What's why does the, why is it, what is the devil afraid of? that he keeps trying to push you out of places that are anointed and ordained of the Lord. Here we go again with somebody in my ear. What's the devil afraid of? It's time for you to get smarter this year. Am I talking to you, somebody? But the men of Sodom was exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord, and the Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, check that out. That's the whole purpose of reading all this. Highlight that part. God wasn't even talking until there was separation. I never asked them to be with you. There's some things I want to get to you that I can't have you sharing. There's some, come on, somebody in here. There's some pertinent things, some sensitive kingdom things that I want to get to you. But as long as you are walking with them, I won't be able to talk to you freely. But what happened? God began to talk after separation took place. The Bible says, now God wants to talk. Okay, you got rid of, not it was a sin to be with them, it was just a weight. It was a weight that's blocking up your, it's clogging up your hearing. Am I preaching this morning? It says, and the Lord said to Abram after Lot, it separated from him, now I'm going to bless. He says, lift up your eyes now from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward. Look all up westward. He says, because this land is your land. This land is my land. He says, for all the land which you see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. Is that good, somebody? 
He says, tell Lot to head out. Why? Because he says, Lot's already in the flesh. He's looking around at what appealed to his flesh. The grass creek seems greener. And how many know he took off where the grass was greener? But God turned to Abraham after he separated and says, now I'm getting ready to bless you. Because I'm going to train you about something. He says, I'm going to show you that the blessing can now work in any climate. Doesn't matter what he chooses. He says, you can choose the crustiest, driest ground that there is, parched land, doesn't matter. He says, if you go with me, he says, then moisture is going to kick in. Vegetation is going to begin to happen. Oh, you got to understand the power of the blessing. Somebody say amen in here. Hey, you, you, you're in, you got the right one baby. Turn to somebody and say, you got the right one. You're in the right house. You made the right connections. Now, what, what's important is that you dig your roots in deep because this season is calling for it. Is that good, somebody? Somebody shout amen in here if you got that. Don't be in the place of the clouds. Don't let, uh, just because everything doesn't seem to be happening or it seems to be happening where they are, don't get lost in that. Why? Because the Bible says, Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, with God, what? For with God, what? All things, or nothing will be impossible. It's being in the place of his presence and in the place of God's voice. Let that matter to you. Write this down as I prepare to close. Let that matter to you more than anything else in 2024. Step into your new season equipped with the word of the word from God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. But you know what's going to get him from day to day? Cause him to thrive? He says he's going to live by every word that proceedeth how? Out of the mouth of God. Turn to somebody and say, get out of the box. Get out of the box. It's getting out of that box and stepping into your God-given destiny with no shame. Get out of the box of the mediocre. Get out of the box of the uh, of, of really stagnancy. And God wants you to get into place of fullness and divine possibilities. Just get out of the box. Turn to somebody and say, get out of that box. Some people are so funny that they worship their, they, they are worshiping their space. Write that one down. They worship their private times. They worship the stuff that they carved out for them. It's all right to have that. They even worship their personal friendships. And God says, man, that box is so tight, even I can't fit in there. What if God wanted to change the game and cause you to level up? I mean, I know some shedding's got to happen. Your love for him has to be greater than anything else. Oh, is that good, somebody? Let me give you this last scripture, and I'm going to be done. I, can, could y'all handle just the scripture? Are, are y'all okay? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you're still here. Well, this side, I feel the anointing. What about y'all? How, how y'all doing? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 43, we're going to end with this. Isaiah chapter 43, 1 through 5. This is so important. Isaiah 43, 1 through 5. You need to understand that God is with you, that he says you are mine and you are my responsibility. And you need not fear. Why? Because the blessing, if you can face that fear, your blessing is on the other side of the fear, that, that foreboding fear, that thing that's, that's challenging you, that kicked in right at the start of 2024. Amen, somebody. How many know news hit some of y'all? Challenges kicked in. I lost my best friend right at the top. And it's like, come on, Lord. Come on. But I realized, wait a minute, on the other side of that is a blessing. Isaiah, I'm going to end with this. Isaiah chapter 43, 1 through 5. Are you ready? We're going to do it quickly. Are you ready? Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1, ready, read. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, rather than old Jacob, put your name there. Who created you, now says the Lord, thus says the Lord, who created you, Marvin, who created you, Freddie, who created you, Deacon Zenobia, who created you, Christian. Do y'all see this? And who formed you, O Israel. He says what? Fear not, because even in 24, I, I have redeemed you. I have you're not just walking somewhere you just happen to be. He says, I've called you by name and 
you are mine. Somebody better lift their hand. I want you to walk into this understanding. You are God's responsibility. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen to the U.S. I am God's responsibility. Either I'm going to be insulated and go through this whole thing victoriously, or God's going to take me to heaven with him. But either way, I win. Y'all help me in here and get excited. Are you here? Verse 2, he says, when you pass through the waters in 2024, what did he say? He says, I'm going to be with you. And he says, what? And through the rivers, he says, what? They shall, this is the promise of God, they shall not overflow you. He says, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Now hear me, fire does happen and it does get hot. Well, I've been obeying God. That's all right. Fire still comes. Anybody been saved longer than a year? How many understand fire still comes? But it is not to melt away the blessing. It's to purify you. It, it is to make you better. Oh, come on. Turn to somebody. Why, why is that fire here? Tell them it's to make you better. It's to make you better. That fire doesn't come because you've been doing something wrong. That fire comes but to make you better than where you are right now. So he says, he says, he says, when you walk through the fire, he says, you, you covenant daughter, come on, you covenant son, he says what? You shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Verse 3, why? For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I am your your Savior. Listen, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia, Seba in your place. Verse 4, since you are precious, oh, glory to God, hallelujah, since you are precious in my sight, you have been honored. And he says, I have love you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Another scripture says he's given you the kingdom for your inheritance. Verse 5, well, he's saying it again, just in case you missed it. Fear not, for I'm with you. I'll never forget, I, 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 <laughs> y'all remember the day, uh, you know, I'll pass, preach some challenging things, and you see a, one of your biggest times get up and walk out for good. You're like, ugh, okay, um, Lord. And then the Lord says to me, I'm here. I'm your biggest giver. Why would you worry about, are y'all here? I think sometimes we miss, and you, you should never make people your source. Say amen, somebody in here. Come on, the Lord said, for everyone that leaves, he said, I'll give you eight more. He says, I'm here. Oh, say amen, somebody. I mean, no, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Fear not, I'm with you. He says, I'll bring your descendants from the east and gather you. Fear is one of the biggest factors from stepping into your season, your new season. But it will require what? Courage. And it's going to require faith because your future is on the other side of fear. Did y'all get anything out of this? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Did you get anything out of this? Oh, come on, Faith Life. Can you do better than that? Come on, did you get anything out of this? This year, you'll be fearless. This year, wake up and put on the whole armor of God. This year, walk with the Lord and be perfect. We're not saying sinlessly perfect, but what we are saying is mature. There are some things you may not be flawless in, but there are some things you should have grown from by now. And God says, that's the you I'm calling for in this hour. Because God says, I'm going to give you more responsibility in the days ahead. Did y'all get this? Give the Lord a hand clap if you got it. How many ready to give in the house of the Lord? Come on. How many ready to bring the Lord's tithe? Come on. We'll bring the Lord's tithe, and we're going to give in the house of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Now, just to prepare you, next Sunday, don't not come because I'm saying it. Next Sunday, I believe it's Big Give Sunday, next Sunday. So uh, there's some things that some of you guys have been believing God to do. Again, it's not a magic trick, but I'm telling you, God says I'll never be a debtor to no man. 
So you're not going to ever outgive me. So I'm encouraging you as you begin to pray about what to give. You know, we never do gimmicks at Faith Life. We don't ever do that. But I'm asking you for next Sunday, ask the Lord, what level of seed do I need to give in the offering? Because sometimes that significant seed is the thing that breaks everything open for you. Say amen, somebody in here. You can't outgive God. And even today I say, if the Lord is moving on your heart to sow a significant seed, yes, the tithe belongs to the Lord. Tithing is your covenant connector. But beyond the tithe, how do you want to walk in blessing this, this, this week? Obey God in the level of seed. I mean, I know there's four ways to give. Obviously, you can give in person. We have the envelopes for that. You can also give online. Thank God for our beautiful website. Has everybody been to our website yet? Come on, we didn't put all that in there for you not to go to it. Remember, it is faithlife.tv, okay? It's better for you to put it in the, uh, what do you call that, the little web address thing, than to just write it because there they, there's another church with some really close letters there. And you'll end up and say, man, this don't look like my church. But I'm telling you, just, and is that somewhere where we can just click on it and just, just do it? Like if they pull up our, if they put, yeah. What did you say? URL. Okay, if you put up the URL uh, specifically, it'll take you right there. But we're excited about this because God is going to open some big things up for you this year. Are y'all ready because of what God's going to do? I want to keep it before you so that you, you don't lose sight of what he's doing. They met somebody in here. So you can give online uh, or on our website, or you can text to give. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Or there's the giving app. Amen, somebody in here. Amen. Is this good? Listen, I'm not going to hold you. Here's what the Bible says. He that sows sparingly shall do what? He says, you shall also reap sparingly. And he that sows bountifully shall reap also. He says, every man as he's purpose in his heart, so let him not grudgingly nor of. Why? Because God loves a. And God is able to make what? All grace abound towards you that you will. I don't know about you in 2024 especially. I want to always have all sufficiency for all things. And he promises this, you'll abound to every good and charitable work. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and serve the people. Here's what I believe. The quicker we get seed in the ground, the quicker we get a harvest. Come on. I was lost. Hallelujah. Come on. I was bound. Couldn't find a solid ground. I was blind. Couldn't see how you call me. here. Come on. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, come on up here. Glory to God. Stretch your hands out toward this offering. Hallelujah. How you feeling? Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get involved too. Glory to God. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Lord, we thank you for the word of the living God today. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for this new season. Father, I thank you for counting this seed even, Lord God, as many of them have sown, Lord, being led of the Spirit of God. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you will honor that seed. You said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you declared all these things shall be 
added unto you. We thank you in advance, Father, for the add to dimension of life. Lord, that many of them will begin to see it, some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold harvest. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you. Thank you that a faithful man, our woman, shall abound with a blessing. Calls them to see it quickly in, in this hour, in this season, in Jesus' name. And all who agree with that, shout it. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. A uh, couple things. Uh, how'd the financial seminar go? I, I was it awesome. Give the Lord a hand clap. At a financial seminar yesterday, I believe it began at 10, and uh, I heard really, really good things. So, um, hey, all I can say from there is put feet to it, and it's going to change the game for you. Amen. And sounds like we had a joiner. Where is he at? Is he here? Do I want him to just wave, wave his hand? There he is, see? My kitty is husband, yeah. Carlos. Carlos said, I've been around you crazy folks so much that I'm going to go ahead and make this official. Amen, somebody. Huh? They, they wrote me Carlos. It's Julio. What's Carlos? Oh, that's all right. Julio. Give Julio a real big. Amen. Give Julio a real big God bless you. Amen. Well, thank God we got it right before you left. <laughs> Amen, somebody in here. Great stuff, great stuff. I don't what's your name, man? The, the, with the with the blue on. What is it? Paul. Paul. I'm supposed to know you. Yeah, okay. You just look different with the shiny head. A Amen, somebody. There's some things that God's gonna bring to you in the coming quarter. And uh, I don't know how much you've been praying about this, but I, I see a, a strategy that God's given you. I see something that was produced that almost caused you to be stuck in a place. But I, I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm just like we just read, rivers in the midst of what's been like muddy. And the Lord says, I'm going to make a way for you. Uh, and I'm going to open up doors for you. And I see even this heart says, I just want to walk close to the Lord more. And the Lord's going to open up a way. There's a special grace that God's put on your life uh, in this season. There are other people who watch your life that you don't even know that, that are watching your life. But God says, I'm going to bless the works of your hands. I don't know what you do. I don't know if you do. But I'm just saying that there's, there's God has supernaturally anointed your hands to prosper in this season prosperity is going to be big for you this season. If I hear, the, I hear the warning of God, just tell him, do what I say when he hears it in his ear. The Lord says, I'm going to bring some things specifically to your ear. Then he says, if you do those things, he says, I'm going to break the dam open for you. Where it seems like things have been kind of stopped up in some areas, he says, it's not that you're doing bad, but God says, I'm going to have you do greater than good. And God says, I want you not to just be complacent where you are. He says, I've given you, uh, he says, I've given you faith for more. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you, if you will obey my voice, to live on top of the lid. God says, get ready for a life that's not just good. He says, I, he says I'm a great God to you. And he says, I'm going to cause you to live on top of the lid in the days ahead. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Was this good today, family? Turn to somebody and say, did you get that or do you need to, do you need to go and get the CD? Did you get it? Did you get it? I'm doing everything I can to help you with this new season and to have a new beginning. I'm going to give you every possible thing. Why? Because you don't need to go back to it. Yes, some of you may go back to basics, but God is going to cause you to spring forward. And let me say this to you just, just because the Lord is, the Lord is uh, revealing this in my heart. He said, for a few of you, it will seem like the first quarter is your moving back like this. But just think of slingshot. I'm pulling you back to spring you forward. Okay? Don't, don't, don't say, 
Oh my God, pastor said all that stuff and it seems like it's getting worse. It's not getting worse. How many understand he's, he's pulling you back to spring you forward? And how many know when you spring forward by the strength of God, how many know you will, you will surpass even those that ran ahead? Not that there's a competition, but there's just things that God wants to, that there's a place of mercy, there's a place of his grace he wants to get you to in this hour. And stop thinking being perfect. That's not, be obedient. Just be obedient. Amen, somebody. I get asked this all the time. Uh, you know, when you give words or when you give this stuff, you know, I notice that most of them come to pass. Well, that's great. I love that God backs up the thing he says because he does if, if you'll get involved. But I, my goal is never to be right. My goal is always to be obedient. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? We got to lose this thing of being right about everything. No, just be obedient to what he said. Say amen, somebody. The key in the Garden of Eden was not that Adam did it right. The key in the Garden of Eden that Adam obeyed. If you obey my voice, he says, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen. The Bible says if they obey, Job 36, 11, if they obey and serve him, they'll spend their days in prosperity and their years and pleasure. Is there anybody here that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and you would like to know him? I don't want to just, just assume that in all this anointing, all this grace, all this, all this stuff, that you know Jesus and you're ready to, you know, you're ready to meet the Lord. Uh, it's not deep. You just got to receive. Amen. Christmas time. Do you have to pay for something? No, no. Somebody said, Here, here's got a gift for you. How much did it cost? No, you don't have to do that. It, it's, it, this is a gift for you. You could never pay for this. So you just receive what Jesus, the finished work of Jesus. Amen, somebody? The Bible calls him the gift of God. So if you're in this building or even if you're online and you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and you would like to know him, real quick, just so I take the time, I want to take time to offer you the, the opportunity to receive him as Savior. Everybody bow your heads. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my heart right now and save me. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for my sins. And he rose again for my justification so that I might be free. Say, I am saved. Thank you for coming into my heart now. Say, Father, say, Jesus, your word declares, sorry, that right now you and the Father are making your home inside me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. And from this day forward, by the help of God, I'm going to live for you in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Come on, give the Lord a shout in here. Listen, whether you're online and you did that or whether you're in the building. And now, if you're in the building, I'm just going to have uh, Elder Tucky here. And you weren't um, a believer before and you gave your heart to Jesus, make sure you get with them because they got some things they want to get with you or get to you uh, just to help in your first few steps as a believer. Or... If you were in a backslidden state and you rededicated your, your, your heart to God, how many understand we got some stuff we want to give you? We want to help you uh, along your, your Christian walk right now. Amen, somebody. Give them a hand clap if you're online and you prayed that prayer. All I'm saying is hit the drop down and let us know, hey, when Pastor prayed that, I actually gave my heart to Jesus. We got to just put your name in the drop down. Let us know. And we got some stuff we want to get to you. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. He can say, see, come out here real quick. In case you're in the building and you would like to join, you understand that this is war season and I need to know the troop that God called me to. I need to get to the brook where God's telling me to be. 
and I'm not going to play out here, praise God, because God sets the solitary in family, the Bible says. So God takes the orphan and he places them in a place where he can grow, be fed, and be accountable. If you are here and you would like to do that, at the end of service, I'm going to say get with her. Now, we've been having more joiners after service, so that's why I do this. Somebody say, why is he taking time to do this? Because sometimes half of y'all are gone and people come and they join. And so I'm just going to say, just so you'll know where to go and say, hey, I, I would like to actually be an official part of this ministry uh, and, and join this. I want this to be my local church family, my, my church home. I mean, understand, again, you know, you can't really join the body of Christ without receiving Jesus, but you can join this local body. I have to say that because if some of y'all came from churches I, I, I came from, if you join the church, you saved. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all y'all wasn't a part of that. They've been somebody. They come up, they join the church, now they are saved. And that's really not how that goes. Say so amen, somebody in here. So if you would like to be a part of this local local ministry, this local body, this ragtag sharp, uh, yeah, Navy recon. You know, no. <laughs> you'd like to be a part of us, these champions of faith. Uh, just see her afterwards, and uh, we'll make sure that you 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 are a part of us. Amen, somebody. We love you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Two things. Let me do this. Are you ready, Tammy? Real quick, give her a hand as she comes up. When she gets done, I'm going to dismiss you, but this is just to, to, to find out who has an interest. Come on up. Tammy, yes. Give her a hand. Come on, encourage her real quick. Well, hello. If you guys are interested in Flame, it is starting June 15th. So some of you have gone through Flame 1. Some of you have gone through Flame 2. We are uh, rebooting Flame 3 starting June 15th. So if you are interested, let me know. Um, Pastor Ron just talked today about New Revelation. We're in a new season, so this is your time. So if you are considering Flame, this is for you. There are a few requirements. So you have to be a member of the house already. You have to have gone through growth track or foundations if you're from way back when, right? Um, and you have to be a tither and a giver, okay? Also, there's no child care. It's every other Saturday, every other Saturday, starting in June um, from 8 to 11.30 a.m. This is going to be such wisdom and impartation and revelation given to you. So if you are considering it, um, get with me. Let me know your name, your number. I'll get you the information, the application packet. It's not something that you just join willy-nilly. You have to apply. There's an essay. There's quizzes. Okay? You have to be spiritually employed. Thank you, Pastor Gina. That means you have to be serving in a department. Um, we are learning all of this wisdom and getting all of this impartation to serve. So we're not just getting all of this to know and have knowledge. We're using this inside of the house and outside of these four walls. Okay, so if you are interested, let me know. Um, I'll get your name, your number. We'll get you the application. It's due in April, and it seems like a far away time, but there's some things that you got to do. There's an essay that you have to write, references, things like that. So if you're interested, let me know. This is going to be your time, your season. This is a good thing. All right, but count up the costs, right? Because it's a serious thing. Attendance matters. You get two absences. That's it, and that is all. Okay? Yes, Mama. All right. No, no, okay. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I love how she said that. <laughs> all right. So if you're interested, let me know. I'm excited about it. I know a lot of you are excited about it. Those of you who were in um, before when we started, please see me as well. That's a requirement for you too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Amen. Give her a hand clap. Hallelujah. No pressure to do so, but those that, you know, in your heart of hearts, you're reaching for more. Uh, some of you know what season. You heard me talking about seasons. I'll go a little bit more into detail the next time. But I, I really needed to just get us all kind of together so we can all step into this. Uh, but after that, we can talk about what different seasons look like. I think it's going to be really good. Did you enjoy it today? Come on. Did, was it good? Did it work? Everybody Okay. Amen, somebody. We love you. Listen, it's all about Jesus. All of it. All of it. All of it. It's all about Jesus. I don't know if you understand how close we are to his return. But it's all about him, man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are. But it doesn't even matter your background. But whosoever believes in him 
should not perish, but what? They're going to have everlasting life. There is one way to God, man. There's one way to heaven. Amen, somebody in here. Don't let it be said too late for you. I know we do the, the thing that we do. Uh, I visited hell. Uh, Michael Crichton can't paint that place. It's crazy. Thank God I, only, I, only, I was only there overnight. But I, I was, I can't say dying to get out, but I, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there one minute. You don't want to be there. There's no horror flick that can paint that place. And here's the thing. It wasn't created for you. It wasn't even created for you. It was created for the devil and his angels. Oh my God, if you don't receive Jesus, where, where, where else do you go? Amen, somebody. God wants you. He's done everything he can to show you, no, I want you here with me. I mean, I give you a choice. And I know there's all kind of debates. Why would God go through the trouble of doing this? How come he just didn't give us free, just don't give us free will and just do that? But no, that's not love. Love says, I want you to choose of your own accord. Say amen, somebody. He could make us robots, but that's not him. I want of your own accord, your own volition. I want you to choose to receive me as Savior and Lord. And that's the ticket to get into heaven, period. The Jesus, Jesus is my ticket to heaven. Thank God. Amen, somebody. <laughs> praise God. Isn't that good stuff? Somebody give the Lord a praise. I love you. I, I, I love spending time, but I know y'all got to go. And I know we got play rehearsal. Glory to God. Hey, tr oh, it's tryouts, auditions. All right. A anybody feel like they got the, 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 the uh, I was going to say Denzel. How'd you know that? I, I was literally going to say it, but then I said, wait a minute, Denzel don't cover everybody. <laughs> so, so I said, you know what? I can't just say Denzel without saying who? Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt getting old. But that's all right. He's still all right. Amen. Somebody. <laughs> but if you feel like you have the ability, praise God, I believe this is going to be one of our best plays yet. Amen. Huh? It's, she said, especially men, especially men. So if you're a man and you just want to be atmosphere, atmosphere, then just be atmosphere. <laughs> but if you want, to, if you actually want to be a part and you want to brush up the old skills, I believe this is the perfect place to do it and be used in ministry. Amen. Somebody, you could change somebody's life because at the end of at the end of the play, we offer salvation. Amen. Somebody in here. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord, man. I love you. Thank you so much. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Lord, we thank you for the word of the living God. Thank you for your anointing. Father, thank you for your burden removing, your destroying power. Father, I thank you for every son, every daughter, every member, and even every guest, Lord, that came today. Father, it did not take you by accident. You knew that they were sent here because, Lord, you guided them in here. And Father, I thank you for the word that was imparted, that ministered grace. We thank you, Father, that much seed was given here minister today, but we recognize that seed was not the only objective. Harvest is the objective. Jesus, you said, and this is my Father glorified, that they that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us a supernatural recall of the things that were given, the word that was given. Lord, not just the things that I preach as a pastor, but Lord, also the voice of the Holy Spirit behind the message. We thank you, Lord God, for those words so they can put feet to it and walk it out. And Father, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the champion in this house of faith and love who are stepping into their new season with boldness and courage, shout it. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody. Release the word of God. Yes. Uh, well, that's been on. Julio, real quick, I got to hug you. Can I get some faith lifers to also welcome Julio with me? Amen. I just want to officially welcome Julio. I love you guys. 